What does Daniel Radcliffe say about Harry Potter never getting an Oscar? What the? Away with you. Why exactly did the movie series miss out on all its Academy Awards? And how did Fantastic Beasts manage to fix that situation? Hi, I'm Clive, and you're watching Awesome Movies. Accio, Oscar. Harry Potter is one of the most popular franchises ever. Collectively, all eight movies made a whopping $7.7 .7 billion. But its popularity isn't only about money, because the story of the boy who lived touched the hearts of many viewers and critics alike. And just like most other prominent films, the franchise received quite a few Oscar nominations throughout its run. Except for The Chamber of Secrets and The Order of the Phoenix, the movies were nominated in various categories, from cinematography and soundtrack to visual effects and makeup. Overall, the Harry Potter films received 12 nominations. But not once did they take the golden statue home. That's rubbish! Yeah, looks like it isn't enough to wave a magic wand to get this kind of award. And it does beg the question of why the Academy never recognized such an epic franchise. The cast and crew undoubtedly asked themselves the same question. For example, the makeup effects designer Nick Dudman agreed that the films were wrongly overlooked. Potter has been very largely ignored by academies around the world, and it is slightly strange," he commented. But he went on to add that the work in itself was a reward for him, because he loved what he was doing for the series so much. And now, let's see what the main cast thinks about this kind of injustice. Dan and Emma's Take on the Oscars I'm sure that most of the cast is unhappy that they never got the coveted statuette, but only a few actually talked about it. Daniel Radcliffe, for example, says that it looks like the Oscars don't like commercial films. Well, he's kind of right, because the Academy tends to nominate and award low-grossing films much more often than highest-grossing ones. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule, and we'll talk about them a bit later. Now, let's see what Dan said to The Guardian about never winning the award. There's a certain amount of snobbery. It's kind of disheartening. I never thought I'd care, but it would have been nice to have some recognition, just for the hours put in. Well, you can understand him. Meanwhile, his co-star, Emma Watson, didn't share what she thought about the Potter series never winning an Oscar. But the actress once commented how she felt about not getting one herself. A few years ago, Watson refused a role in La La Land to be in Beauty and the Beast. And Emma Stone, who got the part instead, ended up winning an Oscar for Best Actress for that film. You would think that it upset Watson. But no, here's what Emma said. I couldn't care less if I won an Oscar or not if the movie didn't say something that I felt was important for people to hear. So we can assume that she also didn't really care about not getting one for playing Hermione. And now, it's time for us to figure out why exactly the Academy overlooked the Harry Potter series. Harry Potter is for kids? Yeah, I know what you're thinking now. These films have so much meaning, and they're suitable for any generation, especially with their huge death count, war, torture, and dark magic. Not the best things for children, right? And yet, Hollywood still argues that Harry Potter was mainly aimed at a younger audience. Or they also say that it's a family film, which is slightly more acceptable. One way or another, this kind of movie usually doesn't get any Oscar buzz. Still, they do have a Best Animated Feature category, but Harry Potter didn't fall under that one for obvious reasons. The acting isn't good enough? Sure, the series has a slew of iconic actors who are totally Oscar-worthy and some who have already won the Golden Statuette, or at least were nominated. Maggie Smith, Gary Oldman, Emma Thompson, those are just a few examples. And even those who never received an Oscar nod were awesome. Robbie Coltrane, Michael Gambon, Alan Rickman, who doesn't love them? And yet, all these iconic actors had only supporting roles, while the main parts were given to kids. The acting done by the child stars was charming, of course, but they were only kids. However decent their performances were, it wasn't enough for those picky Oscar voters. This is something even Dan Radcliffe would agree with, because he once said that he considers his acting in Harry Potter embarrassing. And what do you think about it? Share in the comments below while we're moving on. Not so notable directors? Well, it's impossible to argue with the fact that there were no directors like Martin Scorsese, Steven Spielberg, or Peter Jackson at the helm of the Harry Potter films. Alfonso Cuaron is the only one who has managed to win an Oscar, but it happened years after he directed The Prisoner of Azkaban. Among the other ones, Chris Columbus, who directed the first two films, has been famous since Home Alone. But he's only a mainstream director, known for making family films, and doesn't stand a chance of winning an Oscar. Meanwhile, David Yates is a British director who was barely known in the US, 
especially before the final Harry Potter films. And you probably don't even know who Mike Newell is. Well, he directed The Goblet of Fire. Having someone more Oscar-worthy at the helm would certainly have increased the franchise's chances. Take a look at Hugo, for example. It's a kid's adventure film, pretty much what they refer to Harry Potter as, but it won five Oscars. One of the reasons why is probably because it was directed by Martin Scorsese. Too bad he didn't direct anything in Potterverse. The CGI was poor? Well, this is actually slightly more objective. Sure, CGI in most of the films was pretty great, and two of them even received nominations for visual effects. But what about the Sorcerer's Stone? Remember the Troll? Or Ferenz the Centaur? And even Voldemort's face on the back of Quirrell's head looked far from good or realistic. And they had a multi-million dollar budget to work with. To be honest, it's a shame, because visual effects is usually the best category for movies of this genre. And who knows, maybe if the CGI was brilliant from the very beginning, the series would have had a better chance of winning an Oscar eventually. Just a blockbuster? Remember how Dan Radcliffe said that the Harry Potter movies were too commercial for the Oscars? Well, he was probably right. Because these days, the Academy tends to honor less popular films and overlook mega smashes. And they're also more likely to award dramas about historical figures, or people dying of a severe illness than a fantasy story or a high-grossing blockbuster. Rare exceptions to that are Lord of the Rings, Titanic, and Avatar. But then again, they were directed by much more notable directors. Too bad Peter Jackson and James Cameron didn't get to direct the Potterverse films. But maybe it's for the better? Anyway, let's see why, despite all these reasons. Harry Potter deserved an Oscar. First of all, even though the performances of the child actors probably weren't that Oscar-worthy, countless supporting actors certainly deserved a nod. Once, Dan Radcliffe said something no Harry Potter fan can disagree with. Alan Rickman had to get a Best Supporting Actor nomination for The Deathly Hallows Part 2. Oh, how the final film uncovered the true story of Snape and how Rickman showed it all with his brilliant acting. I do think it's the performance of his career. I think he should get nominations for Best Supporting Actor because it's so touching and beautiful what he does," Radcliffe said. But Rickman was ignored and, shockingly, never received even a single Oscar nomination throughout his career. Another reason why Harry Potter deserved an award was its amazing soundtrack. Admit it, its intro music just gets right into your soul every time you hear it. Besides, they had to appreciate the effort that the makeup and costume design team put in to create all those magical creatures. And Voldemort. And of course, the visual effects in most of the films were terrific. On top of it all, the film that deserved the Oscar for Best Picture nomination the most was, of course, Deathly Hallows Part 2. It had everything an Oscar-worthy film might have. Action, romance, immense character development, brilliant dramatic moments, and a fantastic cast. After the third Lord of the Rings film paved the way, winning 11 Oscars, many people assumed that Deathly Hallows would get similar treatment. But although it didn't happen, an Oscar is actually not the only award out there. Harry Potter didn't go empty-handed. Apart from the adoration of the fans, the series did receive other honors. Most importantly, the BAFTA, pretty much the British equivalent of the Oscars, recognized the Potter films. David Yates won the award for artistic excellence in directing from the BAFTA for his work on four films in the franchise. And Deathly Hallows Part II also received one for visual effects. The main trio received an MTV Movie Award and People's Choice for Best Cast in the final film. And of course, all of them received individual honors. Dan Radcliffe, for example, got a Teen's Choice for Breakout Movie Actor in The Sorcerer's Stone and an MTV TV Movie Award for Best Hero. Rupert Grint won the Satellite Award for Outstanding New Talent for the first film, as well as a few other awards for other movies in the series. And Emma Watson got the Young Artist Award for The Sorcerer's Stone and the Teen Choice Award for Deathly Hallows Part 2. And of course, the Harry Potter series became the third highest grossing film series, which is an honor in itself. But only by going back in time did the Wizarding World manage to land an Oscar, because… Fantastic Beasts finally got one! That's right, the first Fantastic Beasts movie won the coveted statuette for Best Costume Design. It's funny that even the movie's costume designer Colleen Atwood was surprised to receive this award because the Harry Potter films never got one. After all, those movies had such an incredible kind of artistry. But then she thought about it and realized that it probably happened because Fantastic Beasts, set in the 1920s, is a period piece. And the Academy loves awarding those types of movies. Atwood's other films, which she designed costumes and won an Oscar for were Memoirs of a Geisha and Chicago. Yes, also historical in nature. It's funny how by just being set a century ago, Fantastic Beasts managed to do what the Potter series couldn't. Live and learn, right? 
If you like this video, watch other ones we made about your favorite franchise. And stay awesome!